Now to the war in Ukraine. It's not clear how many people have died in that conflict. The, United, the, the New York Times puts the total, including civilians, at half a million in August. Estimates of the number of soldiers killed on the Ukrainian side vary between 35,000 and 70,000. And depending on the source, as many as 300,000 Russian troops are said to have been killed. Most sources put the number of Russian casualties significantly higher than Ukrainian losses. Some 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers are thought to have been wounded and around 200,000 Russians. But these numbers count only physical wounds. They do not include the mental ones. Ukraine has had to scale up quickly to help its soldiers build up their mental resistance with both conventional and at times unusual methods. DW's Max Tsander reports from Kyiv. These animals are supposed to make soldiers feel better. And it already shows. This is Amethyst. He is very kind, gentle and doesn't bite. Anna Burago is the founder of Spirit Warrior, an organization offering therapy with horses to children and people with disabilities. Now, most of the participants are soldiers. Alexander has just finished basic training. Soon he will have to leave his home and his family to go fight. He knows what that means, but right now, the anxiety is forgotten. When you trust an animal, it trusts you. And there is no fear. If he wanted to bite me, he would have done it a long time ago. He just plays. Physical contact is important, on the ground and in the saddle. Horses have a proven calming effect on people. A confident and relaxed horse can affect the mood of its rider. This is what gives a person a feeling of happiness. When a person is in the space, here and now, they can feel, breathe, see and perceive the reality that it is, not the made-up, twisted one. Here at Pavlov Psychiatric Clinic, therapists are trying to help those whose experiences left them damaged. Many here suffer the effects of concussion, and post-traumatic stress disorder. They may sleep for just an hour or maybe two or three. There are constant flashbacks, memories of what happened. There are low moods, emotional mood swings and anxiety states. Exercise helps, says Igor Dubinin, who runs the rehabilitation program for soldiers. The program is designed as a quick fix to help soldiers get back to their units in a few weeks. Not everyone will manage. Ole was among those defending the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol. He even spoke with Channel 4 TV during the siege. When the Russians seized the plant, they took him prisoner. They torture, they beating you on the leg, I don't know, uh, one day, uh, they come to us with a dog and the, and the dog attack us. It was 12 months before he was released and could go home. The first uh, few weeks it's been uh, very good, you know, I have a high my mood, yes. I have a adrenaline that I came home, I see my wife. You see my family, my friends. But that high didn't last long. I can't tell you that it's only depressed. It's, I don't know, it's depressed, PTSD, all, all in one, you know. For his wife, Ole says, it's painful as well. He is no longer the man she once married, but sharing what he went through does help. He also takes medication. Now I can sleep uh, sometimes. And yeah, nightmares, uh, they still, they still in me, nightmares come back. Guilt, anxiety, panic attacks, just a few of the symptoms plaguing many, many Ukrainian soldiers.
Doctors have been struggling to keep up. The war on February 24th, 2022, caught us by surprise and most doctors had to prepare as fast as possible. But we learned quickly and effectively to provide complex assistance, recovery and provide psychological and psychiatric support. Back at the stables, the new soldiers know some won't come back from the front and that many who do will be changed forever. Now, though, they stock up on warm memories to take with them. And DW's Max Tanda, who filed that report, joins us now in the studio. Max, uh, first of all, good to see you. Um, your report that we just saw showed different methods of helping soldiers who've been uh, traumatized by the war, particularly working with animals. How, how is that supposed to help them exactly? Right, Terry. So it, it might be surprising that these yeah, pastime activities like riding a horse or even other activities like sports or arts and crafts, pottery classes, and that they are being used as means to combat mental health conditions with soldiers. But the overall idea is to take their mind off of things. These are people who have gone through a lot, who have made lots of negative experience, who have experienced trauma. And the idea is to give them something to occupy their mind, something positive to occupy their mind and break this negative thought cycle. And from what we could see um, at the stables back there, when we shot with, uh, with the NGO that provides this horse therapy, we could really see that the, the, the soldiers were really living the moment, um, were, were joyful, were, were happy for a moment, um, knowing that they were just mobilized, were being sent to the front, and God knows what would happen there. So they were really captivated. Dealing with these animals allows them to experience um, our um, yeah, physical touch that is not violent, for example, but also dealing with huge animals, animals that are five, six times your size, um, can help you yeah, focus on the moment, really, and uh, live the moment, exactly. Um, this is not the overall answer solution for mental health conditions, of course, um, but it can be used as one building block in combating um, mental health conditions with psychotherapy and medication, for example. Now you spoke to several doctors there, um, uh, therapists. W w tell us more about the kinds of psychological challenges that the soldiers face when they come back from the front. Right, so what soldiers are experiencing right now at the front and coming back from the front um, is concussion. Um, happens oftentimes that is uh, essentially brain damage that results from artillery fire, from explosions come happening in your direct vicinity, from um, yeah, the intensive use of attack drones lately. So uh, these concussions can cause, um, yeah, can cause mental health issues um, and worsen existing mental health issues. So for example, they can cause mood swings, anger. They can essentially change a soldier's personality, make it very difficult to reintegrate into society later on. Um, and uh, PTSD, a post-traumatic stress disorder, um, you heard the doctor in the piece touch on that. That is also another very big issue. That is usually um, experienced by people who have gone through um, life-threatening situations. There are many symptoms to it. Some of them actually can help you in battle, being alert, being under stress, um, light sleep, but also nightmares. And they have some very serious symptoms as well um, that make it very, very difficult to um, yeah, go, go back into society. Um, uh, people with PTSD, soldiers with PTSD experience flashbacks that can be triggered by everyday events. For example, the, the slamming of a car door, for example, um, could remind you of explosions um, that could set off um, yeah, like a psychological and, and, and physical reaction. And it's very difficult to treat. Max, thank you very much for your reporting and uh, good to see you here in the studio. DW's Max Tsanda. Thank you.